Hey guys, it's Neil again here at Fab Locker in Winston doing another troll for the Maker Gear Kit for the Prussian Mendel. This is going to be setting up your ATX power supply to power your um, 3D printer. Uh, first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is short out the PS um, OK. So this will be the power on to ground. So you could do this with just a wire, you could use this really nice breakout board, which you wanted to do it, but he includes the breakout board, so use that. Also, it looks better. So you have that. Right there. Now we need to make sure that everything's powering up right. So we'll go ahead and plug in your Molex, your black 4-pin Molex into your Molex connector. Power up power supply. Nice. Set uh, multimeter set to 12 volt. Let's make sure before we get too far into this that the ATX is acting healthy. 12 volt, 12 and a half volt, 12 volt. That's good. Turn it off. Then you're going to connect your 4-pin here. This is the, there's two 4-pins on an ATX. You have the 4-pin that's connected here, which is um, orange, black, um, red, um, yellow. You want the one that is yellow and black. Again, so for you to measure. Turn your ATX back on again. Make sure these two are 12 volt. Same. Same. Okay, so everything's healthy. So now we will for power leads up. What you're going to do is, can't hold anything in my mouth whenever I'm talking. Um, first thing you're going to do here is, we'll go ahead and wire up the yellow one. Is you notice that one side has yellow, one side has black. What you want to do is take your pliers and bend these two pins together gently. By the way, you notice I've left it connected to the ATX. Um, the reason I've done that, and for safety, unplug it, is um, these wires will help pull some of the heat away so you're less likely to damage your connectors here. Metal can take it, the plastic really cannot. So now that those pins are bent together. Go ahead and grab our wire, which is right here. Strip the end. Cut it down the middle. Sure, twist it. Soldering it out.
I get enough picking on for my soldering skills at the hacker's base. Please, no comments about how horrible I am at soldering. I know I am. Ten up this side. This side. Okay. Then you get your lead you just stripped. Tin that up. Okay, I'm making myself look foolish. I'll do it the right way. Yeah, five, uh, an extra set of hands is wonderful to have. Especially when you actually use them. So, tin this up. Um, he includes the heat shrink, the thick stuff. Let's see, I cannot find my wire cutter right now, so we'll just use this. Two little prongs of it for this one. There. There. You might want to go ahead and give them a little extra space there. Slide your tubing down. Something I tend to do is get a little tape, some cluts. Keep those heat shrinks up there because they sometimes, whenever you're doing your stuff, will tend to want to run around on you. So, it's there. And Tip. Science connected. Since there's actually going to be a good bit of power going into these, I think I'm just going to give them a little more solder just to make them a little tougher. Clean up the job a little bit. Oh, nice and pretty. Okay, relatively speaking. OK. 
Okay, since this heat shrink can sometimes shrink pretty quick, you want to make sure your connection is nice and cold before you slide that down. Not that I've ever done anything that silly before. Slide it all the way over. Okay, that's one side. Another thing I do is when I'm given a certain section of lead wire, I tend to leave it all together until I actually need the other side. Just because if you don't, you might misjudge your distance. And then you're in a world of pain because you've now got two leads that are too short. So, um, ATX, find the one with the end. Connector on. Get in there. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave it on the connector so that it'll it does a little heat sink for you so you don't mess your connector up. Okay. This time we're going to be from um, yellow to black again. So go ahead and your tip, wet it up a little bit, do lead on this side, and grab your wire again, grab the other side this time. Again, get out there. Push your wires. The dangerous thing about the internet is everyone trolls everyone else's soldering, and I am soldering on the internet. This is like a double whammy of troll. Okay, so it's tinned up. Again. Your two wires that you just turn up on this side. See, I forgot something. Cut your insulation again. Be a little bit snug getting it down. Be sure to get it away from the heat. This is going to, the heat will conduct up the wire pretty quick. And slide your heat shrink up your wire. A piece of tape to hold it.
Okay. So it's nice and cool. It's not going to cause your heat shrink to sink to shrink up on you. Slide your two filters down. And you are good. So all you have to do now is shrink those up. I'm going to do it this way. The better way is to actually go grab a heat gun, but I was not smart enough to grab one before I started this project. Or started here, it's actually in the other room in the hacker space. So. Yeah, I need to go back and use the gun on those. But, you get the idea. You now have your two connectors done. You have everything confirmed. You're ready to wire up your ATX.